I completed my training here in London and when I started practicing formally the very first client that came to see me was someone who was experiencing both fertility issues and then repeated miscarriage and therefore what I hadn't realized was that my path had been set and I began as a result of that working with many more women initially uh, who were experiencing difficulties conceiving. What I also realized was that each case was as individual and different um, as, as each person was and that I needed to do a lot of research to find out what might be happening certainly medically um, for that individual but also what might be happening for them on a more holistic level so what other factors were impacting upon their fertility what were they being exposed to um, how did they feel emotionally what was happening for them uh, not only physiologically but on a, on a mental spiritual and emotional level in addition to that, over time, I began to realise that we were missing a huge part of the picture and that was what was happening for our males. Now, we know that one in six couples in this country, and that seems to be replicated around the UK, have difficulties conceiving. In addition to that, we have approximately um, we, uh, approximately I don't have exact figures but male fertility in the UK has declined by 50% in the last 25 years that is a huge decline and therefore by not treating men we're missing a huge part of the picture if you also look at causal factors then causal factors are attributable a third male, a third female, and a third joint. So again, by leaving out our males, we're missing probably 50 to 60% of the picture. So it became evident that we needed to find a way of engaging men as well. I was also very lucky to work in a number of different clinics over my years in practice. And worked with some amazing practitioners, acupuncturists, herbalists, homeopaths. And what I discovered was that they were using structured prescriptive protocols. And that led me to thinking about my own practice and how I worked. And over the years, with lots of research, I developed a range of protocols and techniques to work with these couples who were in a you know, pretty desperate place. I began trialling a course that I'd been, I had put together in 2006-2007 and ran a series of small courses around the UK to see whether their techniques would work for other practitioners, which they did, and the courses then developed and grew from there. In 2011, Along with some of those practitioners, we formed the Association of Reproductive Reflexologists. And what that has allowed us to do is to provide a number of things. It has allowed us to continue to provide support for our practitioners because this is a complex field to work in. And um, we find that they need additional and ongoing support. It has allowed us to... Um, to continue to develop their levels of knowledge so what we do is we have a series of lecture days each year so that they can listen to inspirational speakers in this field they can develop their levels of knowledge and keep those skills up to date and it also allowed us to do um, a data collection so what we did was we looked at um, 180 cases who were being treated by a number of our practitioners and we started to be able to collect some data from that. And one of the most important things we discovered, although we, we knew anecdotally that this was a form of treatment that was very beneficial, we discovered that 68% um, of our, um, our clients who were being treated fell pregnant. 
which was really fascinating because um, a lot of couples who are having dif difficulties think that they can fall back on IVF as a form of treatment and um, it, even, even now the, the general success rate for IVF is only about 25%. So that was very interesting for us that uh, we could see that reflexology actually was having a big impact upon couples trying to conceive and, and clearly 68% of them were were, were um, ending up with a child at, at the end of the process, so that was fascinating. It also allowed us to um, present ourselves in a very professional way and we're very um, keen to form links with the medical profession because we use integrative medicine and what that means is we use medical testing to uh, not only support what we're doing but to measure what we're doing and, and that I will come on to talk about later because it, it is absolutely fascinating and what we've done over the years is form some uh, really strong links with uh, medical practitioners, fertility consultants and in particular consultants that work with male fertility and it is something I am particularly passionate about because our males tend to slip through the net. Interestingly we were at a lecture day uh, or a lecture evening uh, last night talking about um, educating our young people in, in understanding what happens with their fertility and, and one of the things that really got missed, it was touched on very mildly, was, was male fertility and you know male fertility is, is key and even now most medical practitioners focus on what we know is that um, once conception has taken place, once that sperm has fertilised an egg, then the only thing that matters is the DNA and the DNA is attributable to both male and female. So if you've got faulty DNA, then you're going to end up with an embryo that doesn't stay where it should be or, or a, a baby that um, you know, has some kind of genetic abnormality. So really key, uh, male fertility. We're really passionate about that. So um, what does the book contain? The book contains lots of information, practical information, very specifically, I think, for practitioners in supporting their clients. It is the first book that has been written in this specialist field. It provides um, a very structured way of working through a complex minefield because one of the things that we find when our practitioners present for training is that um, they feel a bit at sea. You, you know, it's, well, what, what do I need to know? And when I found out that, then how do I, how do I utilize that information? So the book is really based upon the course that I teach. And it takes uh, practitioners through the book in this very clear and structured way so that they can access the information that they need and they can utilize it to treatment plan for their clients. And it begins by uh, looking at the initial consultation process that we use. Now, when we have a client that uh, rings to make an appointment, one of the first things that we explain to them is that the initial consultation is consultation only. It doesn't involve any treatment. It is about finding out where the client is, what's happening for them, how they got there, and then planning treatment to help move them forward. So we spend a lot of time with them discussing what is happening for them, not just physically, uh, not just looking at uh, their relevant blood tests or semen analysis results, but looking at what they might be exposed to, looking at how they feel about things, looking at what's happening for them mentally and emotionally, because we, we know that all of these things have an effect. What we also know is that stress is one of the key factors in fertility conditions. Now, Whilst you may have external factors that are causing stress, <coughs> trying to get pregnant in itself is very stressful. And couples tend to um, put, place themselves under huge emotional pressure. And, and therefore, the whole process of actually getting pregnant, which should be something very magical and wonderful and enjoyable, becomes something very stressful. And um, I call it kind of reproductive sex takes place rather than uh, something that should be really you know, a, a magical thing to, to create this little being. 
one of the things I say is that it should be, or is, the most creative thing we do as human beings. Creating another human being is an extraordinarily creative thing. So we spend our initial consultation finding out exactly what's happening for, uh, for our clients. Um, we look in detail at female menstrual cycle, what, what is happening within it, because the interesting thing we find is that the majority of women think they know what is happening with their menstrual cycle and actually have very little idea. So quite a lot of what we do is about education. Um, we use uh, basal body temperature charting, so plot, plotting menstrual cycle charts, because that gives us an awful lot of information about what is happening for that client, not just um, when they're ovulating, but uh, the length of their luteal phase, because are they producing sufficient levels of progesterone, uh, is it long enough, is it going to support a pregnancy if they do manage to fertilise an egg and conception takes place. So we, we do a lot of educating clients about female menstrual cycles. We also use uh, blood tests uh, for our female clients to ascertain where the issues might be in terms of their fertility and we use um, semen analysis for our males and this allows us to not only uh, measure what's happening but it allows us to measure the effects of reflexology so we are using integrative medicine, medical testing which shows us where our clients are now and we then repeat those tests once we've worked with them for a while so that we can show medically, scientifically, the effects that reflexology is happening or having. So I think that in its best form this is also one of the best forms of integrative medicine because we are using the two very much alongside each other. Our aim is to help couples to conceive naturally but clearly that is not always possible with some of the much more complex cases. So what we also have are a range of protocols to support couples who are going through assisted conception. And what we do with this is kind of turn reflexology on its head. So reflexology, as everybody knows it, is about uh, relaxation and reducing stress. Um, and it's also about ensuring that the body is uh, working as effectively and efficiently as it can be. And certainly, when we are working preconceptually, that is exactly what we are doing. When we begin to work with assisted conception, we use reflexology to improve the efficacy of the drug and treatment protocols that our clients are undergoing. Now, even if you don't believe that that can have a physiological effect, it certainly has an energetic effect. And we know that uh, you know, in reflexology terms, we are working with energy that is flowing through the body and therefore we want our clients to be able to utilise um, the drugs that they are, have made the decision to take as effectively as we can. So we use protocols that are very prescriptive and work to support the efficacy of those drugs. Um, what you will see as you go through the book is that there are um, a range of structured and prescriptive protocols for regulating menstrual cycles, for treating a wide range of uh, female gynaecological conditions, so anything from things like fibroids, from endometriosis, uh, to an irregular cycle, to an anovulatory cycle, so a woman who might be cycling but not ovulating, to um, PCOS, so polycystic ovarian syndrome, and um, then we look at male conditions and uh, again we have very structured protocols that work to support the improvement of production of sperm, sperm motility, sperm morphology, a range of male conditions that may be affecting their fertility, so looking at things like um, prostate health, um, looking at uh, things like hydrocele and varicoceles which are fluid around the testicle or uh, varicose vein in the testicle, we know that these things have an effect upon fertility so what we do is we treat the underlying condition alongside trying to improve 
their levels of fertility. Um, the interesting thing is that our men are much less likely to present for treatment. Um, although I have had some men who have presented on their own for treatment, the reason we use an initial consultation is because it means that we are able to bring in both parties and that means we are more likely to have all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle and that means we can treat them more effectively and we can plan treatment more effectively as, as a result of that. So engaging with our men is really key to what we are doing. Um, I, th I think I think in terms of working with men, it probably is one of the most important things that we do. And one of the things that I say is that our men are the biggest skeptics, they challenge the most, but they become the biggest converts. I actually really enjoy working with men, I have the most interesting conversations with men about their fertility health and certainly about reflexology and what they believe it can and cannot do for them. Um, and actually once they have uh, begun treatment and start to come out the other side and they see the benefits of it, they do become uh, a real reflexology combo. One of the things that uh, might be useful for you is to just perhaps talk through a couple of case studies that you might find very interesting. Um, and one of the ones that I have treated which was the most complicated and also the most interesting was a wonderful couple who um, had been trying to conceive for 11 years when they presented for treatment without success at all. They'd had, they'd been trying to conceive naturally, they had had IVF um, without any success whatsoever and I, uh, you can guess that they were pretty desperate by now. When they came to see me they had already planned um, to go home to India to have another cycle of IVF, it was already booked. So what they wanted was some preparation for that. So we did lots of preparation for both of them. So unfortunately uh, they both work night shifts, so that night shift has a, a very big effect upon female cycles. And it was also having an effect upon the male, he had very poor levels of uh, sperm volume and um, motility. So um, we did some preparation work with them both and we started to get the volumes up and we started to regulate her cycle which was fantastic. I then tried to find them a practitioner in India who could continue to treat them while they were having their IVF and I couldn't find anyone. So what we did was we taught him the, the treatment protocols. And so when they went out to India and they were having their scans, she would feed the information back to me and I would then ask him to treat her using very specific protocols. And they got pregnant, which was amazing. They were over the moon. But very sadly, um, what we didn't know was that she had um, a cervical incompetence and she lost the baby at 14 weeks whilst they were still out there, which was a huge sadness, both for them and for me. They came home and I didn't hear from them for a little while. And, um, and then she made contact and said, we haven't quite given up. Um, one of the things we'd like to do is we'd, we'd like to try surrogacy. So we'd like to use our own sperm and eggs but we've had someone who has offered to be a surrogate for us. Would you be prepared to still treat us? And I said, of course, absolutely. So we started doing some preparatory work uh, with them. And um, she came for a treatment and we, we did some work regulating her cycle, making sure that things were as they should be. And she had to go off for some tests. And. Uh, I said, once you've had the test, make contact and we'll, we'll decide where we need to go from there. <clears throat> and I didn't hear from her for a little while. And I was on the brink of just kind of making contact to check she was okay. And she made contact to say, I've just been to have my scan prior to beginning uh, 
the drugs for the IVF protocol I need to go through to produce these eggs. And they've discovered that I'm six weeks pregnant, naturally. And she had fallen pregnant two weeks after her last treatment, her last reflexology treatment. And we knew at that stage that she was about to ovulate. And they had managed to conceive naturally, which was amazing, but clearly very nerve-wracking. So um, we treated her fortnightly throughout her pregnancy. We managed to get her to 28 weeks of pregnancy and she delivered the baby and um, he was in the special care baby unit and just before Christmas um, they asked if I would go and treat him when he was 12 weeks old and at the age he would have been had he been born at full term and he had some digestive uh, issues and they asked whether I would treat him and what I did was I taught both mum and dad how to work with his gut. So here they have this absolutely delightful and very treasured little boy and I feel very privileged and honoured to have been a part of their journey. So that is the power of reproductive reflexology. It really can do quite amazing and extraordinary things. So I think I probably will stop there. I could keep going for a long time. But I'm going to hand over to you. So if you've got anything you want to ask, any questions, don't be shy. I'm very happy to, to answer them. And I'm also happy to kind of hang around afterwards if you need anything else. Um, do you mean does it affect reflexology-wise? Is that what you're saying? Can it affect the rest of the body? Well, it's kind of around the the, the spine, the sort of thoracic um, cervical spine area. So my guess is, if you had, um, you know, neck and upper thoracic issues, then it might be reflected there. It'd be very difficult to say without without seeing, but yeah, that's a possibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah show lots of different things so what we didn't want to do is get involved in uh, they're all subject to copyright which is a big issue for us so what we did was we overcame that by uh, actually drawing feet and drawing hands holding the relevant reflex points in the feet so if you have a look at the book what you'll see is the, the how you work with the points is described uh, in a in a written description but then there are also these wonderful um, hand and feet uh, drawings which show you how to carry out the techniques so rather than actually seeing where the points are so it achieves the same thing but it, it's just that we decided that was a much easier way of doing it so to find a practitioner the the, the best way to do it to find someone who is uh, fully qualified is to go to the Association of Reproductive Reflexologists website which is reproductive reflexologist.co.uk and what we have is a find a therapist section there so you can look in your area we have practitioners all around the UK um, from Aberdeen down to Cornwall um, we have practitioners in uh, Northern Ireland um, and we now have practitioners um, starting to come through from abroad so Germany and uh, uh, Germany, Israel um, I can't remember where the others are, India, um, Canada, America, so um, we're starting to kind of spread from the UK and we're running a, a, a course in Holland uh, next year so we hope to have practitioners there as well. So, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I was under the impression that reflexology was putting your thumbs on people's feet to cure their liver or something like that. Right. So are you saying that it's actually a big holistic total approach now nowadays? So lots and lots of things. Yes. Are you talking specifically about no, I'm fertility? No, obviously about. Um, I mean, I expect you to say that you put your hands on their thighs or something, and that would yeah. encourage ovulation or whatever. But, yeah. Um, you're, you're, you've got a more holistic whole approach. We have because we know that um, there are many different things that affect fertility. And so if we isolate one thing and say it's purely physiological. So to, I'll give you an example. Um, I had a young man that came uh, with, uh, with his partner and he had a very poor semen analysis result. And um, 
when you're looking at semen analysis, because of the length of time that it takes sperm to develop, which is 90 to 100 days, you're looking at what happened three months ago. And we were sitting and I said to him, what happened three months ago? And he said, I can't believe you've asked that question. He said, I'm a climber. I was climbing uh, in Ben Nevis with a very experienced climbing friend of mine and uh, we hit an avalanche and uh, my friend was killed. The trauma of that, uh, the emotional trauma of that, the stress of that showed in his results several months later. So that's why it's really important for us to look at what's happening uh, mentally and emotionally as, as well as. And we also know that what we are exposed to, so diet, nutrition, lifestyle, also has a big effect. Um, our food chain is so polluted now by things like phytoestrogens and xenobiotics and chemicals that get into our food chains and naturally occurring estrogens that have a big impact upon how our reproductive and enterprise systems work. So we're very key to kind of put our clients back in the driving seat so they have contr control over what's happening. These are the things they can do. We give them advice that allows them to support themselves really. Okay.